Shark Bay and Monkey Mire. There's a fair few things here we would love to show you. Um, first of all, you've got the Stromatolites, you've got Shell Beach, rated one of the most amazing beaches in the world. And you fair think you think it's beautiful, pristine white sand. It's not until you get up close to realise it's shells. We're going to stay the night in, um, where are we staying? Denham. Denham, that's right. Denham, we're going to set up a tent at the caravan site there. Apparently we've got a sea side or seafront uh, site, so. And then tomorrow we'll do Who a bit. Who said that? You did. I did not. I said, wouldn't it be good if we had a oh. It's the last campsite available in the whole park. Yeah, I don't right. think it's going to be a seaside. Okay, we're going to be out in the middle of the open, right yeah. next to the we're amenities gonna be, and toilets. We're going to be basically sleeping in the toilets. the stromatolites here in Shark Bay and this is one of the main reasons Shark Bay was made a World Heritage listed site. Oh. It's called Hanlon Pool. is home to the most extensive living stromatolite system in the world. The stromatolites of Shark Bay may just look like cauliflower shaped rocks, but they're actually the product of colonies of microorganisms. These microorganisms mix sticky mucus with materials they've extracted from the seawater and they form like a cement which they add layer by layer to their rock-like home. These stromatolites are also an incredibly important source of oxygen for the ocean. They're kind of like underwater trees. In fact, sometimes you can still see them fizzing oxygen into the water. Stromatolites are just spectacular. Uh, it sort of doesn't look like much from the beach as you're walking out, but when you get out to the end of the walkway, they're, they're just amazing, aren't they? Like these shapes and, and, uh, and like rocks growing out of the seabed. It just looks beautiful. We see all the little fish hiding in the crevices and corners. All right, Shell Beach, here we come. Australia. Shell Beach is one of only a handful of places on earth 
where shells replace the beach sand. This beautiful snow white beach is made up of trillions of tiny cockle shells up to 10 meters deep and stretching for over 70 kilometers. There is no sand, only shells. Bluff, and apparently you can come here and you can see uh, sharks and dugongs and turtles and rays um, all swimming in the shallows here. It's a perfect vantage point because as you can see it's got that shallow sandy bottom just in the bay here and uh, if any of those animals uh, come into this area you'll be able to see them. So this 24 hour camp spot, it's a great little spot, nice and cool. I don't know people will come here and just spend a few days just camping here because it's free. It's about two hours north of Geraldton and it's a nice little spot on the way up north heading to Monkey Mire or Exmouth, heading up further north. Little tip, you have gotta get here earlier in the day, maybe about one, two o'clock because the best sites are taken very quickly. Um, if you arrive late at night, uh, you'll be stuck out away from the river, which is still not too bad. It's got some drop toilets and it's still a nice little place to stop.
is the most western town of Australia's mainland. You can't get any more further west of the town than here in Denham. camp just set up you can go straight to the beach right there Dolphins began visiting the beach at Monkey Mai in the mid-1960s when fishermen began sharing their catch with them. As trust grew, more wild dolphins came, and so did the tourists. However, as time went by, overfeeding meant that new calves born weren't learning the skills to hunt for themselves. So in 1994, strict new controls on feeding wild dolphins were introduced. So the dolphins still had to learn to hunt for themselves to survive in the wild. So we're just at Monkey Mire. We're gonna go and see the dolphins. It's famous, everyone comes here hoping you get picked to feed the dolphins, which we probably won't get picked because of school holidays and there's kids. Of Hundreds of Why kids. wouldn't you give it to the kids to do? But anyway. We're going to go in and we're going to see the dolphins getting fed. I've done that and I've never been picked before. <laughs> wow. What was it like? It's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's uh, to feed them, a big smile on their face. You see a lot of people love dolphins, they're dolphin lovers. Serena got the GoPro ready and I get picked. And I'm like, Me? No way! <laughs> I've done this a few times. I've never been picked. Anyway, now that we go on for the third time, let's see if Serena can be this time. Stop 
talking, feed me, she's saying. She's like, you're not going any further until you feed me. <laughs> Serena get picked. Take away, just remember not to touch the dolphin, okay? Right, so you're just gonna hold the fish by the tail, lay it nice and flat in the water, and then let go. <laughs> Great job! Thank you so much for coming down. Thanks guys. Just keep your eye out for those Jimmy's. Serene. Gosh. Look at that. 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 So we hope you've enjoyed exploring Shark Bay on the Coral Coast with us. We've had a great time. There's so many things you can do here. Just stay at one of the caravan parks in town and do day trips out. There's heaps to do. Here you go out and check out the dugongs as well. Um, we tried booking tours to do that. It's just so busy. So. It's a long time of year, but we recommend you come and check it out. We really enjoyed the feeding the dolphins. That was pretty good. We fluked it that both of us got picked. We've been here before and many times we stood there and never get picked. It always someone else gets picked. But don't forget, please subscribe and uh, click the bell for a notification of our next episode. And we'll see you on our next Fair Income Adventure. See you then.